Testing, testing, let's see. Looks good, looks like we are live. Alrighty, let's get started. Uh, first of all, hello and welcome to Tizo Guitar. My name is Tyler Griffiths, I go by Tizo, and this channel is all about learning guitar, but with a special focus on R&B music. So, if that's what you're interested in, please feel free to subscribe, click the bell, make sure you don't miss any of my uploads or live streams. Uh, it really does help the channel out, and I want to make sure that you guys are getting the information that you need. So, real quick, let me see what we got here. Just going to get a little organized. All right, so, like the title suggests, um, today we're going to be learning how to play a song called Chances by Matt Keen. If you haven't heard of Matt Keen, he's, he's not been a really big R&B star, but I feel like he's going to get there. Um, uh, I like a lot of his songs. He does some stuff with Joyce Rice and... Who else was he on with? Um, I think he has a song with like Destin Conrad. There's like another producer that he likes to work with named Esta. Um, if you haven't heard that that stuff, definitely check him out on Spotify, Apple Music, whatever you have. Matt Keen, you can see how it's spelled in the title. Um, but anyway, I thought the song was really cool. It's not super complicated, all right? So it's just about, I think it's five chord shapes total. Um, very straightforward. I feel like the real challenge with this song is the rhythm. Um, there are some sections where you're going to have to have a pretty good grasp of 16th note strumming as well as how to use uh, syncopation. And I'll get to that shortly. Uh, I got to stay organized and look at my notes. Okay, so what I'll do real quick is just kind of show you the tab that I've prepared for this. Um, if you want a copy of this tab, it is available on my Patreon page, patreon.com backslash Tizo Guitar. All right. And I will drop a link um, to this in a pinned comment after this live gets posted to the channel. So, you see our five chord shapes up top. Oh, let's close that. F major 7, C major 7, E7 sharp 9. That's our Jimi Hendrix chord. Then we have this shape. This is the C shape of an E major chord. If you're familiar with the cage system. Um, and then we have another F major 7. So we have two F major 7s. We're going to be using two different shapes because I felt like when I was listening to the song that certain sections were using um, a lower voicing, which would have been this first one here. And then when it gets to the chorus, it gets to um, this higher voicing. Okay, so there's a little bit of a string intro. Um, I don't really seem to play guitar at that part. So basically two full measures of just a rest, letting the strings do its thing. And then the guitar comes in with the verse at 13 seconds, all right? And I'm going off of the YouTube video. There's only one YouTube video with it right now. So very straightforward. We're going to be strumming and kind of holding these chords for a while. I'm going to highlight just this section for the verse and let you hear what that sounds like. So the majority of this song is really going to be going between these four or these two chords back and forth, the F major seven and the C major seven. The only time where we have this Hendrix chord is really uh, initially during the verse. Um, after that, I don't think you ever see this chord again. Uh, it changes. So most of the verses and the pre-chorus will sound like this. So the rhythm stays the same, essentially. We're just switching out that E7 sharp nine chord, that Hendrix chord, for this E voicing, all right, E major voicing. So all that's pretty much consistent. Once we get to this pattern of chords, it, it pretty much continues throughout the rest of the song with some variations in the rhythm that we're playing with. So um, I'm gonna skip ahead to the chorus. So second half of the chorus is where it gets crazy. So you see all these X's here, and don't let that freak you out. The X's are merely just playing uh, fully muted strings, right? So you're strumming, but no, no ringing out. Okay, and I'll break this down shortly. Um, so the second half of the chorus has this, but you can see it's the same chords. F major seven, C major seven. F major seven, C major seven, and then an E major. Okay, 
So we keep that same pattern until we get to the, um, the interlude after chorus two, comes in at three minutes and six seconds, and also the outro. They share the same, well actually, let me get rid of that because I have a section for the outro. So interlude and outro have the same thing, and here's where we get into this syncopated strum pattern, which I'll let you hear. I'll let you hear the chorus too. So here's what the chorus sounds like. So we have that 16th note strumming coming in and lots of muting. So this is a good opportunity to practice that and work on that if that's a weak point currently for you. And then here, same chords, just different strum pattern. So that's, that's pretty much an overview of, of all the sections you'll need to know for the song. And now let's take it to the neck of the guitar so I can break some of these things down for you. Do go there, camera two, are you awake? All right. Okay, so let's go over those chord shapes first. So first chord shape is gonna be an F major seven. We're gonna use this voicing. We're gonna have, here, actually let me move this over. Give me one second. So we're going to have our pinky on the 8th fret of the A string, ring finger on fret 7 of the D string, and we're going to be barring with our index finger the remaining uh, 3 strings on fret 5. Alright, that may or may not be a new voicing for some of you, but that is the C shape voicing for a, um, an E major, sorry, F major 7. All right, F major seven chord. Next chord we're gonna need to know is gonna be a C major seven on fret three. So we're barring fret three from the A string down. Ring finger's gonna go on the fifth fret of the D string. Middle finger's gonna go on the fourth fret of the G string. And pinky's gonna go on fret five of the B string. All right, that already sounds nice. Those are our first two chords. Um, then for the third shape, this only comes up once, but we have this E7 sharp nine. Okay, that only happens initially in the verse. But that one, we're gonna do middle finger, fret seven of the A string. Index finger is gonna be on fret six of the D string. Um, ring finger is gonna be on fret seven of the G string. And Pinky's going to be on fret 8 of the B string. All right, we do a little movement. I'll show you that later. Okay, so we got that. And then the next shape we'll need to know is that E major. So it's just like our F major 7, right? Take that F major 7 shape that we already covered, and I want you to slide it up one fret towards the tuners. So now we have Pinky on fret seven, we have ring finger on fret six, and we have our bar finger barring fret four. Then I want you to put your middle finger down on the B string fifth fret. And that is an E major chord. All right, so it's just like the F major seven. Slide it back a fret, put the middle finger down on the B string fret five have your E major. All right, so we got that shape, and then the only other shape we need to know is the F major seven bar chord. So if it's still an F major seven, we're just gonna bar fret eight from the A string down. We're gonna put ring finger on fret 10 of the D string, middle finger on fret nine of the B string, sorry, B, fret nine of the G string, and we're gonna put pinky on fret 10 of the B string. So it's literally the shape that we did for the C major 7, just slid up to fret 8. And be 
because we are using two different voicings for the F major seven, this one and this one, you can decide that you only wanna play one of those voicings for the entire song. If it's, if it's easier for you and you like the way it sounds, you can just choose one over the other. They're gonna work in the same instances. So with that, now we're gonna get into um, just those different sections. <clears throat> I wanna make sure I give you guys enough time or spend enough time showing the strum patterns that are coming up. So for the verse, uh, for verse one, we'll say, we're just gonna do F major seven. I'm gonna let that ring for two measures. What that is, that's a four count is one measure. So it'd be one, two, three, four. Do that again. One, two, three, four. Same thing, play the C major seven. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Why does my camera not wanna focus right now? Come on. There we go, that'll work. Okay, so one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. That's what I mean by two measures, two four counts, all right? Then we're gonna go right back to the, the F major seven. Three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two. And then we're gonna do this. So on that last time we go through, on the second four count, so we have one, two, three, four. We're gonna count one, two, while it's still ringing out, one, two, and then for the three and the four, we play the E7 sharp nine, three, and then we're gonna flatten our index finger. So right now my index finger is barring the D, G, and B strings on fret six. And then I'm just gonna play the B string one time. So I'm gonna go. All right, so coming off of that, that C major seven. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, so E7 sharp nine. And then just play that sixth fret of the B string. And then it goes right back into it. Uh, F major seven. All right, so that's essentially the verse. After that, after that first half of the verse, we just go between the F major seven, C major seven, back to F major seven. Oh, sorry, then we're gonna go, after we go back to the F major seven, this would be the second time that we're playing that, then we would go to this. So we go to the C major seven and then the E major voicing. All right. So what that would sound like, I'm just gonna play it very slowly so you can hear the entire verse, okay? So we start off here, F major seven. Right, so that would take you into the pre-chorus after that. So that's just verse one. Let me pop over and check chat just to make sure we're all doing okay. All right, if you have any questions about what I've gone over so far, please feel free to ask it and then I will get to it as soon as I can. All right, let's keep on moving. <clears throat> Excuse me. So that was just the verse that we covered. Now when we get into the pre-chorus, it's gonna be this pretty much the same thing that we did for that second half. So it's gonna be F major seven for two measures, C major seven for two, <clears throat> um, back to F major seven for two, then C major seven for one measure, and then one measure of the E major chord. All right, so 
that will take us through the pre-chorus. Now, the first half of the chorus is identical to the pre-chorus, all right? So it's going to be the same thing. Now, here's where it starts to get different. So the second half of the chorus, we switch from doing these long, drawn-out strums, where we're just kind of sitting for a measure or two, to now we're getting into the 16th note rhythm. So if you're not familiar with, with what a 16th note rhythm is, <clears throat> every one of those four counts that we talked about, right? One, two, three, four. That equals a measure. Now, with a 16th note strumming, we're going to be basically playing four strums for each of those counts. So it's going to be one, two, three, four. All right? So that's what the 16th note is. It's fitting 16 notes into that same space that that four count was in. It's something, that, something that's very common in funk music. So if you're not familiar with that kind of strumming, definitely look up some funk tutorials um, on YouTube and it should be able to get you started off on the right foot. Okay, so this one, uh, when we get to the second half of the chorus, we switch from doing uh, this voicing of the F major seven. Oh, not that one. That voicing, we're gonna instead use this voicing. So the bar chord. And we're gonna be, we're gonna be selectively either pressing down on the strings or releasing them to mute or play when we want to. So let's break down that rhythm. That's gonna be the rhythm that we're using. We're gonna go. We're gonna go. All right, so da, 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 da. And so the, the, the way I'm able to, to kind of quickly switch between playing the chord and muting is I'm only very lightly releasing my grip on that chord. So my fingers never uh, leave the strings, but they do release enough pressure just so that the strings come off the fretboard. And that gives me all those dead notes, which were all those X's that you saw on the tab earlier. So as long as I don't squeeze down, I get the muted sound that I want. And then when I really want to get that sound, I let it ring out, I squeeze down. So real quickly, the, the strum pattern one more time is. So if you don't want to, if you're not really uh, able to do that just yet, what you can do is just focus on the times when the chord is ringing out and just play those strums, like as down strums. So you can go. A little bit slower. Okay, so that's, that's the pattern. And if you know the 16th note strumming, there's just pretty much throw some, some dead notes in there. Take note that my hand is always going up and down at a consistent rhythm. I'm keeping that 16th note timing, um, and then I'm just kind of choosing when I want to hit the strings. All right. I know it's a little bit difficult to grasp. If you're, if you're new to this, um, definitely give yourself some grace. It will take a little bit of time to get used to that. But like I said, you can always just focus on when the chord's ringing out and just play that when you play along. Just do down strokes. Okay. But definitely spend some time practicing that, that muting technique where you lift off the fretting hand, and um, that way you can make those notes dead when you want them. Okay, so that's the pattern. So that strum pattern carries through all the chord changes. So for the um, the chorus, or the second half of the chorus, it's the same, uh, same progression as the pre-chorus. So it's still F major seven, C major seven, F major seven, C major seven, to the E major. Okay, so you're just applying that chord um, strum pattern, that's what it's called. One of the 
the benefits of having those chord changes end on muted notes is you can kind of slide your fingers down and get to your next chord shape while you're doing the dead notes. It doesn't really matter where your hand is. You still get that same muted sound, so I can go. And I can get all the way up here to my next chord while those dead notes are going. So hopefully that made sense how I explained that. Um, but that's the second half of the chorus we just went over. So that should be good. If you have any questions, let me know. If not, we're gonna keep going. Almost done. So after all that, the next thing is the, it's basically gonna keep going back. It's gonna go back to verse two, pre-chorus two, chorus two. So we've gone over all those parts already. Uh, all that's left is the outro. So the outro has a slightly different strum pattern. Um, same chord progression that we just did for the chorus. It's just we're gonna be doing, um, let's see, I'll let it play. I wonder if it'll play through if I'm not. So you should be able to hear that. So it's like a, that transition is pretty tough but it's the same progression, like I said, C, F major seven, C major seven, F major seven, C major seven, back to the E major. So we're just doing this da, 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 da. So that's, that's what it is for the, uh, the little interlude that's after chorus two, as well as for the outro to the song, where it's just kind of voices and guitar for that part. Um, so that's all the parts in the song. Uh, I think, yeah, we think we covered everything. So like I said, if you, if you do need the tab, it will be available after this live stream gets posted to the channel. I'll drop a, a link in a pinned comment, and you can get the tab from my Patreon page, patreon.com slash guitar. Um, and also, if some of these chord shapes were new to you, like the, uh, the these ones, like the F major 7, that C shape F major 7, the E7 sharp 9, um, if you're interested in learning more chord shapes like these, which are very common in R&B music, especially current R&B music, um, I do offer a R&B chord library. Let me switch off of this. I do offer a chord library, which is a collection of about 35 different voicings of some of the most common chord shapes or most common chords <laughs> used in R&B. Voicings and shapes would be the same thing. Um, but some of the most common chords I've come across playing R&B. Um, and so I really just condensed it down for you. Uh, I also include some sample progressions to get you off to the races using these chord shapes in actual music. Um, and I also have audio files showing you how each one is played. Um, so it really is helpful. It's something I wish I had when I was just starting out um, because it really would have saved me a lot of time just knowing exactly which chord I needed to know for R&B. And it's just like two to three different voicings of the same kind. So you'll have three different kinds of uh, major seven chord or three different kind of seven sharp nine chord. That way you really have, you know, a, a wide array of things in your bag to choose from when you're playing. All right. So that will be available. There's a link down in the description below where you can find that. And if there are no questions, I will get out of your hair. I really appreciate you guys being here and checking this out. Um, hopefully you guys learned something. Um, if you have any suggestions for future lessons, things that you would like to cover, go ahead and leave them in the comments, um, and I will get back to you as soon as I can. Um, have a great rest of your week. I will see you guys hopefully on Saturday. We should be talking about some stuff um, regarding pedal boards. I think it's going to be a lot of fun, so definitely don't miss that. I'm thinking around noon Eastern time. All right, so stay tuned for that. I really appreciate you being here. Don't forget to leave a like, 
comment, share, subscribe, click the bell, all the really great things that will help this channel succeed and grow so that more people just like you can see this channel and learn guitar just like you are. So I appreciate your time. Take care.